Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about sustainability and first nation teaching. Now let's continue with this important point. Principle of practice or holistic based practice. And holistic based practice in some academic fields such as sociology and education refer to providing children with opportunities in all aspects of a particular area of interest or concept and supporting them in recognizing that the whole concept is interdependent on its parts. Some suggest holistic is a different from holistic in what holistic refers to considering the inter interaction between the mind, body and spirit. Holistic based practice include children finding meaning and purpose from the interaction with a family, extended family, peer, community, and the natural world through experiential learning. And experiential learning support children in developing a holistic way of thinking. This means that similar to flexible and set shifting, uh, children gain more experiences and learning to draw from. They integrate layers of learning into the thinking process. Uh, early learning teacher must foster children's capacity to experience and gain an understanding of and respect for the natural environment as well as the interdependence among plants, animals, people, and land. Similar to belief and values of indigenous community, holistic environments promote children's learning by ensuring that the environment support learning as being organic, emergent, and experiential. Holistic big experience connect children to the inner beings. One of the most successful ways of supporting children in connecting their inner beings to their external environment is through storytelling that occurs rather than from a predetermined book. Storytelling captures children's imaginations. Storytelling support children in understanding the culture and knowledge about the past and the present. Token circles root in indigenous um, communities in Canada are effective in supporting children and early learning teacher in have a meaningful conversation that connected ideas with people are experiences. Now let's talk about some keywords which connect the a topic with First Nations and with Indigenous communities. We have this um, definition about 
what is an indigenous knowledge. Um, it refers to the ideas, cultural knowledge, values, belief systems, and worldviews of local people uh, related to the environment. Indigenous knowledge are transferred from elders to the younger generation. But what are elders? Elders refer to individuals who have gained recognition as custodians of knowledge and who have permission to share knowledge and belief. And the third definition coming to, to know, coming to know refers to connecting with people who connect with and um, support the exploration of new learning. This may include engaging in a journey or process together and a reflective process that contribute to deep thinking. Okay, now let's move on to this definition according to Endel and Dixon Kachin. Uh, we have three factors which are identified as a builder of knowledge in childhood. Building on the premise that children are engaged learner, Engdahl and Dixie and Kessian uh, identify that they have the right, the children have the right to be involved in issues that concern life here, now, and in the future. Uh, especially in Dal, uh, suggest that early learning teacher believe um, benefit from determining how they bring together children, families, and communities to develop cultural identities within a social and ecological framework. As outlined and early learning teacher who adopt a child-oriented perspective use children's day-to-day -day living experiences, including in the places and spaces that are safe, enticing and special for children to learn about the environmental, um, the environment and the environmental pedagogy and some sustainability practices. Also, Dixie and Kachin suggest that early learning teachers developed an environmental pedagogy. They describe environmental pedagogy as strategies that are used to support young children in learning about and experiencing how natural environments function and particularly how children and adults can embrace sustainable practices and care for the ecosystems that are encountered. When we mention child-oriented perspective refers to adults empowering children to make choices, have freedom 
to play and encouraging them to use a preferred approach to experimenting with new ideas and concepts in the play. The environmental pedagogy refers to the access, opportunities, and experiences extended to children in the natural environment, that is from the forest to under the trees, to exploring bogs or ponds. And the ecosystem uh, refers to the interaction um, among a community of living organisms in conjunction with non-living component of the environment. Early learning teachers think about environmental sustainability as a pedagogy in broad terms, drawing on literature from a variety of resources. I hope uh, you can see this will support early learning teachers in creating strategies, environments, and experiences that contribute to children developing skills and knowledge that are foundational to and um, fundamental in sustaining and improving the natural and social environments. Now, the evolution of environmental sustainability and environmental education is found in this picture below and are divided by years. Timeline. First was knowledge transfer Early learning programs were encouraged to provide children with information on such topics as where water comes from through exposure to science books and charts. Experience. Uh, children were encouraged to participate in experiences and learning in their natural environment. However, autoplay was being scaled back in favor of experience oriented toward academic preparation. The third is action. Early learning programs began taking action with the children. They were encouraged to plant trees, um, recycle paper, and um, contribute to reducing food waste. Discussions occur about the types of action that could support keeping the environment healthy. And this was a forerunner to sustainability. The next is sustainability. We have here participation. In participation, we find that children and early learning teachers increase out of play and the use of loose parts. And the last Collective engagement beyond 2010. Here, children, families, and early learning teachers are being encouraged to collectively move forward toward increasing experiences in natural environments. View the beauty of the earth and um, develop 
practice that reduce negative footprints uh, to the um, to the environment increase engagement on learning about how indigenous way of knowing and the environment can benefit and influence practice by all citizens Now we can observe through these pictures, indigenous holistic theory is based on the principles of hold, ecological, cyclical, and relational. The medicine wheel for direction and circles are interconnected to the nature and the environment. Identify that indigenous culture and practice are based on a reverence for the natural world. Elders have a significant role in sharing traditional cultural teaching exposing students to a worldview that recognizes the intrinsic value and interdependence of all living things. Elders are seen as those who have accumulated knowledge, who have answers, or who know how to do things according to tradition. Their connections to the people and the land are foundational of the knowledge and values that they share. There are definitions used to describe sustainability and sustainable development as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Sustainable practice within early learning program focus on supporting children in learning about their natural environment as well as society and culture. Early learning teachers are encouraged to review and adopt a definition of sustainability and sustainability practices to guide their practice. Understanding the context of various definitions is fundamental for early learning teacher in creating a framework that guides them in why and how they embed sustainability practice into the programming decision and modeling processes. Ideally, early learning teachers provide children with the opportunity to learn up about the natural world. Emphasize how to foster caring for others and the environment. And be responsible citizen with a genuine concern for the world, concerned of the world they live in. Um, modeling a culture of inquiry-led pedagogy is an ideal approach that contributes to children discovering new knowledge about their environment. Children benefit from environment where they experience a sense of wonder, curiosity, and concern for their natural world. We have the seven R's of sustainable practice, 
and they are interconnected. These are concepts that could be effective in guiding early learning, teacher, and sustainable process. The, the seven R's of sustainable process practice are interconnected. The terms reduce, reuse, and recycle are now ingrained in many Canadian communities and cultures. The environmental conditions and continued change that children today will experience are significantly different from what children of 20 years ago experience. The increased concern related to climate change water quality and water shortage, treatment of environment, food security, um, consumption of goods across disciplines and are topics of concerns in the field of health, political science and education. Some institutions, recognize institutions, identify three integrate sustainable pillars that influence each other. These sustainable pillars are social, cultural, economic, and environmental. The pillars are positioned to interrelate to the seven R's and are viewed as foundational for sustainable development. As part of sustainable practice, early learning teachers discuss with the children, the use of natural items in their play. Play, uh, they engage in discussions about ethical considerations. In using the materials, collecting materials and determining what may and may not be removed from the outdoor space. For example, early learning teacher and children may discuss picking wild flowers. Should they pick them for the classroom or let the flowers live out the natural life cycle? Similarly, if there are insects that children are interested in exploring. My question is, should they create an habitat while they explore them and then return them to the natural environment? Or do the early learning teachers use other strategies to support children in learning about the insects. Many of these decisions are influenced by the early learning teachers' perspective on learning about and caring for the environment. We have here in this slide two more, the social, cultural, and the emotional. The social cultural pillar is strongly influenced by children role models. For example, loose parts. Think about how loose parts influence children engaging in discoveries together. 
As well, think about how children learn many aspects of risk taking place from the observation they make of their peers. Imagine what happened when children are exposed to a new aspect of nature, such as viewing frogs in ponds and how um, collective discussions contribute to them gaining new knowledge about the frogs. Later, uh, you will read about the five pits and the importance to children development. Early learning teacher promote and focus on respecting nature and encouraging participation, emancipation, equality and fairness amongst individuals and group of children and adults. From an early learning programming perspective, the economical pillar encompasses the life cycle of all measurable goods and services consumed within the program, including the promotion of recycling and reducing waste. For example, um, the more time children spend outdoors, the less electricity is used indoor. Children may be provided with a variety of alternative surfaces for drawing on outdoors such as the fences or rocks rather than paper source. For many families who emphasize environmentally sustainable practice, they may prefer to be given a digital photo of the children's creation on the fence or rocks rather than at work on paper that they will be required to recycle. Now let's move forward to the theoretical foundation with the ecological theory of Yuri Bronfenbrenner. Um, for many early, early learning teachers, this ecological theory, as presented by Yuri Bronfenbrenner, has merit, especially when combined with aspects of social concept construct. And he used the term ecological theory as a way to emphasize how the environment places of being saddened and the institution in which children gain their life experiences potentially affect their development. Bronfenbrenner identified that there are multiple ecologies within the five system that he identified as the microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem, macrosystem, and chronosystem. It is the last one. His perspective aligned with much of the research that outlined the barriers and challenges of children being exposed to outdoor play and to 
programming that support environmental pedagogy. It is the end of this lecture. Now we'll work with some activities. I will post them in the stream and you need upload in the Google Classroom. Please follow my instructions.